on the world crew today we're going to be talking about the festival of the lost event that just dropped in destiny yesterday i'll be walking you through the intro quest and all the quests you can get throughout this event along with how to get the weapons the eerie engram focusing system along with the legend haunted lost sectors as well and to wrap it up we're going to be talking about the weapons that come with this event and the perks that i think you should be going for on them all right first thing you want to do is go to the tower and talk to ava she's going to give you a quest called classic carving after that she's going to give you a mask to equip Make sure you put it on because if you don't have it on, I'm pretty sure nothing related to the event will drop for you. After that, talk to Ava again and she will give you some spectral pages. A little side note here. Make sure you guys have at least two spaces in your inventory for spectral pages and candy during this event. I only had one for pages, so when I got into the Honda Lost Sector, I was wondering why I couldn't pick up any candy. That is why. The next step in the quest is to go do a Haunted Lost Sector. If you're still in the tower, there's a little projection to her right that you can interact with to launch you into the matchmaking for the activity. But if you're not, if you open your map, there is a Haunted Lost Sector node above the tower if you click on it. Alright, so now you're in a Haunted Lost Sector. Let's talk about completing it. The goal of this activity is to capture zones to spawn headless ones, aka those big dark blade knights with pumpkin heads. Now, the faster you kill these headless ones, the faster this activity will progress, and the more headless ones you kill, the better your loot will be, along with more of your spectral pages being converted into manifested pages. You will use these manifested pages to unlock more stories in the Book of the Forgotten, and you will also use them later in this quest, so you need them. Back to Hana Lost Sectors though, after you kill 10 headless ones, a boss will spawn that you can damage for about a fourth of his health. After that, he will gain an immunity shield. Once the shield is up, a capture point will spawn, and therefore, after capturing it, a headless one will spawn. But, once you kill this headless one, it will drop three pumpkins. You can then throw it at the shield, damaging the shield. After you throw those three pumpkins at the shield, the shield will break. You can do another fourth of itself, and then rinse and repeat. After you completed the Hana Lost Sector, go back to the tower and speak to Ava once more. She's going to ask you to unlock a shrouded page in the Book of the Forgotten. This is the book to the right of Ava. Doing this will move your quest forward once more. Your next step is to go talk to Ava and then claim your event challenge in your quest tab like the other events we've played in the past. If you don't know where the event pass is, open your inventory, go to the quest tab and then click the event pass in the top right corner. It's the purple square to the right of your seasonal challenges. You can't miss it. After you've claimed the challenge, make sure to go talk to Ava again and then she will give you the new Cosmic Grenade Launcher. After you finish that quest, Ava will give you another quest called Sophisticated Sculpting, which is basically going to ask you to do all the Haunted Lost Sectors across the game on Legendary Difficulty. Legend Haunted Lost Sectors have the best chance to drop Eerie Engrams, which you can use to focus event weapons along with exotics, even ones that you don't have. Decrypting Eerie Engrams also gives you another chance to get the Lost Memento, Memento, after you completed the Triumph, which we will talk about later in the video. Now, there is a Haunted Lost Sector on Nessus, EDZ, Europa, and the Moon, and I believe they rotate every couple hours, so get them done when you can. Now, I am seeing some people across the community saying that this quest won't progress if you don't have Spectra pages, so if you find out that the quest won't progress for you, I recommend you go get some and see if we fix it. Speaking of Spectra pages, let's talk about how to get those, as well as candy. They both drop across the game just in completing activities, and if I had to say mission completions is probably the best, giving 9 Spectra pages. So that same first contact mission track that everybody was using during the dining event will probably work here. So check out the Cheats Forever video, I'm sure he's already uploaded it, and if he has, I will put it in the comments below. With that being said, if you enjoy doing other activities, feel free to do so. Cruise will match, completions give you 3 pages, strikes give 4, and Gambit also gives 3. All right, moving on to candy. Like I said earlier in the video, make sure you have your mask on or else candy will not drop and you need it to buy all the items from the event. You will see candy dropping periodically whenever you kill an enemy, I repeat, while wearing a mask, but you can also get them from the tree next to Ava and Ikora. As you climb each tree, you will see pieces of candy on the ground that you can pick up. I don't know if this resets daily, if I'm, I can't really remember, but if it does, just try to check back there every day I reset. Now, candies can also drop from certain activities as well. Like Strikes, they give 350 pieces of candy, Crucible gives 245, along with Gambit also giving 245. But if you guys want my suggestion on the best way to get some candy, go ahead and load up the EDZ and go do heroic public events. They give 210 candy, a pop, and they also give two to three pages. 
And since the EDZ is always spawning more public events, you can pretty much constantly do this until you're maxed out. Because this also gives pages, I'm assuming this is probably the best way to get pages and candy solo, because more people are going to be doing it throughout the event. And this is a great way to do it if you don't have access to the first contact mission. Ava's bounties also give candy as well, so feel free to grab those along the way, and they also give you some bright dust if you're running low on that. Now, let's move on to what we've all been waiting for, how to unlock the all black memento. For first off, you must complete a secret triumph that has three steps that you must do and are all hidden behind question marks. But luckily, people have figured out how to do it and I'm here to share the information with you all. Now, the first step is to do the Fallen Saber Strike with the Clovis Brain Mask equipped. You should get this mask just from completing the intro quest. I can't exactly remember when I got it, but I know you got it around then. Now, the second step is to get 100 kills on Niamuna while using the Nimbus Mask. You can get the Nimbus Mask by completing the event card challenge Hocus Focusing. This quest asks you to focus one Eerie Ingram to complete, so go ahead and do that and make sure you go claim the mask. For the final step in the triumph, you must get 25 finisher kills in Legend Haunted Lost Sectors while wearing the Tormentor Mask. To unlock the Tormentor Mask, you have to do another event card challenge which asks you to kill 100 headless ones. I should mention that you can do these steps in any order you want, I just decided to list them this way. After doing all three of those steps, you have completed the secret triumph. So go to your inventory, select triumphs, and then season of the witch section, hit the right tab label general, and then the triumph you're looking for is called twilight in the bottom left corner. Claim that triumph and the memento is yours. Now, begrudgingly, let's talk about why people have named this event festival of the cost if you want you can buy the event pass but it's not necessary to enjoy the event it's basically a small battle pass you can complete to earn rewards shown at the bottom of the page now i'm not gonna lie here that ferrero roche ghost shell looks amazing and it almost got me but i'm gonna hold strong because bungo's not getting any of my money outside of these expansions if you want to buy this event's new bug themed armor you can do so in the eververse store for 1500 silver or 6,000 bright dust, along with all past Festival of the Lost armor and the other merch that came with this event. On a more serious note, some of this stuff does look really cool, like the old timey ghost car sparrow looks amazing, and Bungie's art team really is putting their foot in this stuff. I just wish there was a way for me to earn this stuff in the event, not paying for it, but that is a video for another day. All right, let's talk about some weapons and the perks I was suggesting them. We're going to start with the newest one in the group, the Acosmic, a Void Rapid Firing Grenade Launcher. Now, this grenade launcher is fairly in the middle of the road. It just seems like another grenade launcher with good perks that we already have, so it doesn't really bend the needle that much. So it's great if you don't have one of these grenade launchers with perks on them already, but it definitely does not even come close to beating the Trials of Osiris grenade launcher at all, so don't even think about it. But let's talk about what it does have. In the first column, we have Clown Cartridge and Field Prep. I would say go with Clown Cartridge if you can. In the second column, we have two more notable perks in Explosive Light and Cascade Point. If you want to try something different, the Stabilizing Rounds is also in the last column. But it just sucks for Pulsar Braces also in that column. For the Magazine perk, I heartily recommend that you go for Spike Grenades because it gives you increased damage on direct hits with your grenades. Now for the Macabre Arc Aggressive Sniper. It's got the same rolls as last year in Snapshot Opening Shot, but if you can go without Snapshot, Keep Away is also in the first column, which should make this sniper feel even better. If you want to try and use this sniper in PvE, Auto Loading Hoster, Triple Tap, and Clown Cartridge are also in the first column, and you can combine that with Vorpal in the second column. I also would not recommend this, but this sniper also rolls with Volt Shot, and the jolt damage would be increased because it's a special weapon. You can combine it with Eddy Current, which increases your reload speed after sprinting for 3 seconds. Horror Story, a precision stasis auto rifle is back once more. For PvP, I would suggest Dynamic Spray Reduction or Enlightened Action in the first column, but you can also combine that with Target Lock in the second column, as well as Cascade Point if you want to have fun. 
And if you're looking for something in PvE, you can never go wrong with the combination of Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie. And with that, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I haven't used this auto rifle since it came out a while ago, and I don't think it's gotten much better since. Even though they are kind of an auto rifle meta, I don't see much on it. So if you guys are seeing a perk combination that I just don't see, feel free to let me know in the comments. And the last weapon that comes with this event is called Jurassic Green, a solar rapid fire pulse. And the first thing I saw when I opened up these perks were Keep Away and Head Seeker. This perk combination is good on almost every pulse rifle in the game, and when I saw it, I immediately knew that this pulse was going to be amazing, because I've been using this exact role in my Oversoul Edict, and it feels just like grabs of my lot from Destiny 1. If you happen to get this role to drop for you, I plead with you, please go try this thing in PvP, because just from this role alone, I know it's going to be good. Now moving forward, if you don't want to try that, this gun also has some other good roles. We have Tried and True Perpetual Motion and Multi Kill Clip. I've also heard some chatter about Golden Tricorn on this pulse if you have a build for it. Other than that, Incandescent is also on this weapon in the second perk column. You could combine that with Subsistence for less reloads or maybe even Heal Clip for some easy health back when you reload after getting a kill. Now that's just about everything involved in the event. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and leave a like if you did. And subscribe and hit the bell if you want to know anytime I post more Destiny content on this channel. Thanks for watching and remember to stay spooky. Love ya. Peace.